Hello, Dad. That's me. I'm Dad. Had a little too much fun at a wedding last night, so we'll see how this goes. I'm optimistic that we can get through this. Me and you, my friend. That's all we need. One Football. As always, a thank you to One Football for sponsoring the weekend recap and also for providing us all with a great app that allows you to custom tailor your newsfeed to the players and competitions and everything else that you care about. Follow matches on the go with their live match tickers and scores watch highlights, read interesting articles, and much more. The link in the description will get you a free download on iOS or Android, so go ahead and use that link. Let's do it. And let's all promise ourselves that we will never drink grappa again. If you know, you know. Newcastle are pretty hard to watch, eh? Especially for their own fans, I'm sure. And especially, especially after this Sunday's loss at the King Power Stadium. Rodgers and the boys were going brazy, putting five past Dubravka. I need to change the battery in my camera real quick, or let's just see, let's just play chicken with the dead battery sign. Ricardo Pereira's incredible form continues as he also continues to show why he made it into the Premier League team of the season last year, my Premier League team of the season, made up entirely of players that weren't picked for the PFA team of the year. And that's surely what everyone is interested in. Whether or not he's living up to my expectations, which he is. Come on, we can beat this camera, this dead battery sign. We can do this. This adds a little bit of fun to this. But yeah, Vardy with a brace and Didi grabbed a goal as did Dummett into his own goal. <laughs> I had Newcastle going down this year. And at this rate, that will become a reality. Not sure what you expect with a bad squad and a maybe even worse coach, you know? City took on Everton, a slumping Everton side at Goodison Park, and while Everton weren't as bad as they have been lately, they still ended up losing 3-1. But it was a tough match for City, and they had a funny start when Marez's perfectly squared ball to Gundogan smashed off the bar from the open goal. But Kevin De Bruyne played an absolute pornhub ball to the edge of the six-yard box for Gabriel Jesus to head in. But just under 10 minutes later, Dominic Calvert-Lewin scored a scummy, stolen goal away from his teammate Seamus Coleman. That's the kind of thing people do on Rocket League and all the time. And while it's all about getting that bread, aka winning, it's annoying to see people do that. Nani did that to Ronaldo against Spain in a friendly that would have been one of his greatest goals of his career. But anyway, clearly, I am bitter about some teammates from the past, but we'll move on. I've loved seeing how Mahrez is doing so well at City now that he's been given opportunities regularly, and he scored another one on this occasion, the eventual winner with a driven low free kick. He also played some incredible through balls to Sterling, etc. Great showing from him. Some truly outrageous misses and close calls from Everton later, and Raheem Sterling almost blew another chance, but just snuck it in off of the bar. 3-1 City. Hard fought win. Chelsea, Brighton, Alonso kicked wide in the first half and kicked the post in frustration after. Then in the second, Mount was taken down to the box from a seemingly sleeping Adam Webster. And Jorginho's little fairy hot penalty found the back of the net. We're still going. This dead battery sign hasn't got us yet. But just you try and stand between Brighton and their defensive self-sabotage as their defense then played Tammy Abraham through and he nearly doubled the lead. But you can't keep Hudson Adoy down forever. The boy's back, raring to go, and his driving run and dish to Willian deflected into the back of the net. 2 0. Lampard's first Premier League home win as the Chelsea manager. We're still going. Battery hasn't got us yet. Tottenham again made things very hard on themselves and they struggled to a 2 1 victory over Southampton. I mean, it doesn't help when Serge Aurier gets himself sent off in the 31st minute and you have probably the most error prone keeper in the world. No, in the league, we'll say, in Hugo Lloris. What on earth was this joker doing, trying to turn Ings inside out like that? Th this guy, just launch it. Just launch it forward and stop trying to be such a cutie on the ball. But Spurs were bailed out by Kane finishing off a lovely attacking move. Mood? Move. Or a mood. Attacking mood. Southampton could have equalized late, but they end up losing 2-1 to Spurs. Wolves, they finally won. After seven matches, Wolves got their first victory of the Premier League season, and it of course came against Watford. The other team hanging out in the Premier League basement, you know, they're chilling, they got some pizza. Their opening goal from Matt Doherty was a stunning one, the second a hilarious own goal, 2-0 Wolves. And finally, Liverpool labored to a 1-0 victory over a very plucky Sheffield United side. I thought that Liverpool should have had a penalty in the second half. They didn't get any love from the referee though, and a few Sheffield chances later, and Dean Henderson made a massive mess of Gini Wijnaldum's strike, which, by the way, was their first shot on target in that game, and it was the winner. Later, Henderson made up for it with a great save, but unfortunately, they still end up losing 1-0. So, 
Sheffield continue to impress, and since United versus Arsenal is tonight, the table looks like this. Liverpool is perfect with seven wins from seven. City are five points behind. Leicester and West Ham in third and fourth, respectively. <sighs> Premier League, done. Camera, still going. That red light's still flashing, though. We could die at any moment. This is high-stakes stuff. Okay, the most high stakes we can recap there's ever been. Let's go to Italy and damn, <laughs> AC Milan are in a terrible state. Sad to see such a big historic club in this sort of condition. They're brutal to watch, honestly. For the first time since 1931, 1931, AC Milan have managed to lose four of their opening six matches to start this Serie A season. And my God, do they ever look dreadful. As I just said, the last few years had seen some bad Milan sides, but these guys are the definition of lifeless. Maybe besides Rafael Leung, as he scored a beauty and generally seemed to have some fight in him. I don't know if it's Giampaolo that sucks or if it's the players that suck, but it's starting to look more and more like it's the players and not the managers. Gattuso, I mean, he did just as well as Giampaolo. At least they had some fight, right? Anyway, this week they lost to Fiorentina. Fiorentina put three past them and then AC Milan finally scored. What a goal by Ribery, by the way. Turned two Milan defenders absolutely inside out. He did what Hugo Lloris was trying to do. So yeah, 3-1 loss at home against Fiorentina for AC Milan. What do they do at this point? Another manager? Not sure that's the move, man. Napoli lost midweek, but thanks to two goals in the first half, they did just enough to overcome Balotelli's Brescia. Balotelli actually scored on the day. Nice header from the corner and his first since returning to the Serie A. Ah. Juve played at home against Spal, and the rebirth of Paolo Dybala continues as he looked decent once he's been given some opportunities, as did Juve in general, to be honest. A better performance from them, which you'd expect against a team with one win and five losses sitting in 19th. Pjanic scored an insane volley, and then Cristiano Ronaldo made it 2-0 when Dybala found him at the back post. Big header past Berisha in goal, who was probably the player of the match. He left Ronaldo and Ramsey just shaking their heads in disbelief with some of the saves that he was making. He was on fire. Could have been many, many more goals for Juventus in this one. And of course, the league leaders into Milan had a tough away trip to Sampdoria. Well, actually, Sampdoria have struggled this season a bit, but still. The city as best midfielder so far this season, Sensi, opened the scoring with a tasty strike from distance off of the post and in. The touch off of Alexis Sanchez also helped to fool the keeper, but it was still Sensi's goal. And later, Sanchez would score one of his own when he snuck in behind unmarked. What a great miss kick from Sensi, which turned into the ball through for Sanchez. He later got a second yellow for simulation, which I thought was pretty harsh, to be honest with you. Oh, it died. It finally died. Okay, where was I? I think I got my framing wrong too. Damn it. Whatever. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I thought that there was a bit of a, uh, a harsh second yellow for the dive, but anyways. They scored a third after Sampdoria made it scary at 2-1. 3 won the final, six wins from six. The table looks like this. Inter in first, Juve second, Atalanta in third, and Napoli in fourth place. Germany, my friend. Despite most of the action going down on Saturday, Friday's match between Eintracht Frankfurt and Union Berlin had some intrigue. What's also nice to see is Frankfurt's new additions really, really panning out. I read an article on The Athletic about how they sold their three buffaloes, as they called them, you know, Haller, Jovic, and Rebic. But so, Dost and Silva all had a hand in their 2-1 victory over Union Berlin. Goals from Dost and Silva and assists from So. We could see Frankfurt back up there fighting for European places again this season after their slow start. Borussia Dortmund aren't helping themselves with their title bid as for the second match running now. They only managed to draw. This time an entertaining 2-2 draw away to Werder Bremen. They dominated, had a 2-1 lead, the most dangerous lead in the sport, and Friedel pegged them back to 2-2. Dortmund, what is going on over there? That doesn't bode well for them as they dropped to mid-table while Bayern Munich defeated the new boys, FC Paderborn, 3-2. Guess who scored? Wow, you're gonna get no points for it, but yeah, it was Robert Lewandowski as he became the first player in Bundesliga history to hit 10 goals after just six appearances. That is absurd. On top of that, Coutinho is back, man. He scored and assisted, putting in a man of the match performance. 3-2 Bayern, this could be a great permanent home for him. Put that Barcelona nightmare aside and get going in Munich. Remember last week when I said, hey, Schalke is looking good, but hold off on your judgment because they have played terrible teams? Remember when I said that? Well, under David Wagner, 
they're looking like they could be something close to the real deal as they went away to RB Leipzig, the league leaders at the time, and smacked them with the 3-1 loss. Schalke with the big win, the big shockwaves being sent throughout the league as Schalke showed they aren't a meme anymore, at least not yet. And to be honest, they look like they won't be under Wagner. Definitely better than they were under Tedesco last season. Also, Bayer Leverkusen won 3-0 against Augsburg and Freiburg also put in another solid performance to win 2-1 and ensure that the chasing pack in Germany is looking good. As you can see on the table here, five teams sit on 13 points, just one point off of the table topping Bayern Munich. Good stuff, Germany. You entertain me. Keep it up. In Spain now, and you know what wasn't very entertaining, the Madrid Derby. Not much airtime to devote to this one, unfortunately, as there isn't much to say, really. Both teams had some okay chances now and then, but were wasteful. Gareth Bale, here's looking at you, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, did he ever sky that opportunity to win it in the second half. Also, it's crazy to see Eden Hazard playing... I wouldn't say poor... I wouldn't say that he's been poor for them. I think that would be a stretch to go that far, but he's nowhere near as dangerous looking or decisive a player as he was last season. He hit that buffet too hard on his vacations. Still recovering from those buffets. But Real probably should have won this match. Atletico have been slumping lately, not putting in great performances. Jerome Felix looked terrible, while Real Madrid have been okay, I guess. I mean, despite their shortcomings, they're still in first after seven matches. Atletico, just one win in their last four outings in La Liga. Not very good form from them. Oh, the Granada and La Liga love story continues. Maybe Barcelona shouldn't feel so bad losing to them 2-0. But seriously, Granada improved their record to four wins, two draws, and a loss. The exact same record as Atletico Madrid's as they defeated the basement boys. Leganes 1-0 at the Estadio de los Carmenes. Leganes 20th place. The worst place. And since we just mentioned Barcelona, they went away to Hatafe, and while they struggled at times, they did not drop points this go around. Luis Suarez scored the first. Big assist from Ter Stegen there. <laughs> you don't see that too often. Then on the other side of halftime, the new dude, Junior Firpo, the left back, scored. His first of the season and what was his third start for Barcelona now. Bit of a scare for Barcelona in the last 10 minutes or so of the match as Longley got a second yellow, but they held on for the clean sheet. 2-0 Barcelona. Sevilla, Sevilla, they went back to winning in a five-goal thriller against Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad has a real interesting team to me. After going down 1-0, Sevilla rallied and scored through Nolito, Ocampos, and Vasquez. Odegaard set up Porto in the 87th minute to set up some anxiety for Sevilla, but they held on. So, as I mentioned, Real Madrid are in first with one point lead over Granada. Atletico and Barcelona round out the top four with Sociedad and Sevilla right on their doorstep. Okay, boys and girls, we'll do the bonus league now. No, I won't do Liga Noche in every episode, even though it kills me not to. As for now, it will be in every second episode or when there's a big matchup. This time, I think it's a good time to check in on Ligue 1 to see what Neymar and the boys are up to. Despite two losses from their first eight matches, PSG are of course on top of the league. This past weekend, they just edged Bordeaux. And the man who saved them? Well, sorry, the man who provided the winner yet again for PSG? Neymar, as he was set up by Mbappe. What a story there. He was so clearly wanting to leave, and the PSG Ultras had some very strong words for him, and he scored the winner for PSG in their last three Ligue 1 victories, all 1-0. This is a different PSG team. They aren't smashing it like they typically do. One thing is for certain, they haven't lost while well, Idrissa Gai has been in the lineup, and they haven't conceded with him in the lineup either. He's been a great signing for them. Play him in every match, in every position, why don't you? Angers are right on PSG's heels, despite getting just a draw this weekend against Amiens. Who's right there next to them? Nantes, as they got a 1-0 win over Olympique Lyon, who are having a tough time to start this season. Monaco, they started terribly again, but they have won their last two matches in a row quite convincingly. First, they beat Nice 3-1 last week, and then this weekend, they defeated Stade Brestois 4-1. Slimani with a lovely performance in that one. Marseille have problems with scoring. Three draws in a row now sees them just outside of the top four. Lille, Nantes, Angers, and PSG have those spots locked down at the moment, while Lyon are floating around in 11th. That is gross. Okay, kids. 
I need to rest now. Thanks for joining me on this fun little ride. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed your weekend as much as I did. <laughs> Love ya. Bye. Bye.